Since Twitch is trying so hard to get their users to leave their platform, I'm gonna show you today how to set up a kick.com stream. Let's do it. So now that we're on kick.com, make sure that you go ahead and log in or sign up depending on what method you wanna use or if you have an account. Don't forget to go grab OBS Studio at obsproject.com. Grab it for Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever it is for you. Once you get it installed, make sure you find the icon and right click and run as administrator. This is more important than you might realize. It'll allocate more GPU memory space to this program, which makes it run more efficiently. If you don't have this, then it can cause some problems. We will go back to Kick in just a moment, but first we need to set up some of our OBS stuff now that we're running it in administrator mode. First things, you wanna make sure that it is up to date. I know you just downloaded it, but just just, just to be sure. Check for updates in the help tab, and you will it will let you know whether you have updated it fully or not. So very basically, we need a couple of things. I'm gonna run through these really fast because I have other tutorials on how to set up your OBS scenes and sources and encoding settings in much greater detail. So I'll be sure to click those. So those will be in the description below. For now, let's go ahead and hit our plus sign. We're gonna add a scene. We'll call that gameplay or screen record. We're gonna set up a display capture. So hit this plus sign and they're gonna go up to display capture and you're gonna wanna choose the monitor. Now this is gonna look a little strange, but don't you worry because we can fix it. So what you wanna do when it's not sized correctly, you're gonna right click and hit transform and you're gonna go fit to screen. Now it's all fixed. Enjoy this endless loop of OBS screens. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to add a webcam or a video capture device. Go ahead and hit the plus sign and go to video capture device. You can hit, uh, we'll just say main cam, hit okay. There's my camera right there. I can hit that if I wanted to and hit okay. And I can actually resize this to fit anywhere I want it to. So look at that, boom, easy peasy, right? Now I'm gonna disable these by hitting the eyeballs just because I don't wanna see them while I'm also trying to record. But now that we did that, we're gonna wanna do a, another add scene. You can right click and add, or you can hit the plus icon again. And we're gonna add a talking scene. This is really important for when you just wanna take a break and be like, hey, let's just chat a little bit. We're at a talking scene. And we're going to go back into video capture device because what's the most important thing in a talking scene? Probably to see you talking. We're gonna add existing, we're gonna go back to main cam, and we're gonna hit okay. And then boom, we're good. I know there's a lot of little nuances here, but again, go check my other videos for how to do like video filters, how to make this look nicer, how to set up overlays. But for now, this is just to get you going and you can always do some uh, additional research on that kind of stuff. Now let's get into the meat of this, which is the encoding settings. So in order to get to the encoding settings, you're gonna go to settings in the bottom right hand corner, and you're gonna wanna go to, actually let's go to video first. So the video settings are really important because you want to make sure these are going to be the same resolution ideally because if they're not the same it's going to use more of your performance in order to downscale it to a different resolution so i recommend having them the same whether they're 1080p or whether they're all the way up to 4k and 4k uh it doesn't matter just keep them the same that would be my ideal scenario for you if you change anything hit apply and then go to the output tab the output tab is going to consist of a few things you'll see streaming recording audio and replay buffer we're not going to get into replay buffer we're going to very lightly touch on on some of these things. For the streaming section, make sure you have audio track one. I know this says Twitch VOD here. That will not be there soon, trust me. But for now, make sure audio track one is enabled. So in the video encoder section, you're gonna see a couple options. You're gonna see the NVIDIA NVENC H264. You're gonna see X264 and what you might even see an AMD something or other. Basically the NVENC H264 and the AMD equivalent are encoding chips directly on the GPU that help process all this stuff so your CPU doesn't have to get taxed so heavily. GPUs are more efficient, generally speaking, with doing this encoding type stuff. It's more recommended to use NVENC or the AMD equivalent. The settings will probably be somewhat similar, but use X264 as a last resort. Preferably, you don't have to do this because the CPU has a lot harder of a time encoding all of this stuff at the kind of efficiency and consistency that the other encoding mediums have directly on the GPUs. We're gonna use H264. For streaming, the bit rate's a lot about internet. This kind of is equivalent to about six to 10, 15, 15 megabits per second kind of deal. Twitch can't even go above this. I would assume Kick also is around 4,500 to, to 6,000. Go ahead and set your bit rate at 6,000. If your stream is a little is too choppy and stuff, then you can lower this to 4,500 and go down from there. Your keyframe interval should almost always be two. Your preset, I would recommend medium quality. As I've said in previous videos, there's a lot of YouTubers who have done research on this and have found that P4 is a good, it's just a fantastic value middle ground for quality. I would recommend 
this right here. Tuning should be high quality. Multi-pass mode should be single pass. Again, research has been done on that and two passes is just frankly not worth it. So go with single pass, go with high profile, uncheck, look ahead and cycle visual tuning. It is cool that they give you an example of what it is, but it does make it more difficult on your system to run. So I would disable those. If you're not sure what to put for GPU, it's most likely zero. If you want to be double, double, double sure, then go to your task manager and in your task manager, you're going to see there is a GPU section down here at the bottom and under performance. If you have an Intel or like an integrated graphics card on your CPU, then you're going to see more than one GPU down in this area. But most likely you're going to want to choose the most powerful standalone GPU you have. In my case, it would be this 3080. I'm going to hit GPU zero because that's what the number says. Your max B frames should almost always be two as well. So stick to two. And then for X264, you're going to want to keep a lot of the same settings. So raise this bit rate up to 4,500. You're going to want to do a medium quality preset. You're going to want to do a high baseline, high profile. You're going to want to do no tune. And don't worry about the X264 options. That's a lot more advanced. Basically, it's going to be sort of similar. And you're going to have to just adjust this based on how your system reacts. Going to the recording section, you're going to want to make sure that you are setting this, these files up in a location that you, you know and probably is somewhere organized. You're going to want to use MKV as the recording format. Basically, the difference here between MKV and MP4 is if something happens to you, the video file theoretically would live as long as the hard drive is fine. The video file won't be interrupted, unlike an MP4. MP4 is more easy to use because you can just immediately get it and put it in your editing program. There's an easy way to convert MKV to MP4 very fast, automatically, so you don't have to do a single thing. Hold on for that. I'm going to explain that in just a moment. It's very quick. It's one button. So use MKV. For the video encoder side of things, I would recommend HEVC or H.264 for the recording side of things. HEVC is a lot better and more efficient. It's basically H265 rather than H264, higher quality, and it is a lower cost basically on your system, but also on your file size. So I would recommend using HEVC. If you use H264 or X264, basically keep all the same settings from the streaming tab, copy those settings, put them in here, ignore all of this except for audio track. Make sure the audio track one is enabled. You might want to enable two and three just in case you have multiple audio sources that you want to be recorded. I will show you how to check that in just a second. A little bit different for HEVC, it is recommended you use CQP as the rate control instead of CBR. And for the love of God, don't do lossless unless you know what you're doing. The CQ level should be 20 or around there. The higher you go up to 25 basically is the cutoff. Higher is not better. The higher you go in the CQ level up to 25, I believe it's actually the less quality it has. I could be wrong, so check me on that in the comments. CQ level 20 is a nice middle ground to quality, but also performance. And I like my stuff to be perform well rather than then just look super good. No one's gonna wanna watch you if stuff is laggy as all get out. Keyframe interval should be two. Your preset should be P4, P5. Again, the middle ground of quality and, and value here. I like to do good quality for my recordings just because the recording can be a little bit more important to have better quality. Try to push this envelope. If it doesn't look good, it doesn't work, start dropping frames, then I would avoid this. High quality tuning, single pass mode, main profile, not main 10. This is the same stuff as the previous section. No look ahead, no cycle visual, same GPU method and same B frames. All this stuff I just went over. So backtrack a couple minutes and you'll see the stuff in the streaming section. It's basically the same except for the CQP, CQ level and also this stuff up here. All right, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you hit apply on all those changes so you don't have to redo them. Then go to audio and I like to set my bitrate a little bit higher than the 128 that it starts with. Higher quality audio is down here. Uh, lesser quality audio is up at the top end. Ignore replay buffer completely. That could be a whole separate video or a whole separate thing to mention in a different video. It's not important to people who are just trying to get on kick and start streaming and not worry about all the bells and whistles. So ignore the replay buffer. Now to quickly reference that MKV thing I was talking about, go to advance and then go to the recording little block here and say automatically remix to MP4. This is that button I was telling you about that will automatically handle as soon as you're done recording, it will automatically convert it into an MP4. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stress about this weird file format. This will handle all of this for you. Just make sure this button is clicked. As for your audio, make sure you go to your audio tab and you're gonna to want to enable your desktop audio. Either it's going to be the default, most likely for your system, or it's gonna be something else. But basically, this is where your game sound and stuff is gonna come through. So make sure you enable that. And then for your mic audio, find the mic that you'll be using. This will create a new little audio bar in the corner here. This is how you're gonna know that it worked. 
If you're not sure on what to put in either of these two sections, the best thing to do would be to go to sound settings, which you can type in the search bar on the bottom and on your windows, and you'll see what you should put in. Desktop audio will be here. The mic section will be here. So make sure you coordinate with this to make sure you're in the right spots and you'll be good to go. Make sure you hit apply on all that fun stuff and then hit okay. So next important thing is we need to go back to kick because there's something we got to handle. Now that we're back on kick.com, you're going to want to click on your little face in the corner and then go to creator dashboard. Once you're in your creator dashboard, you want to go to the left side and you want to click on settings and you want to click on stream key. You're going to see your stream URL and you're going to see your stream key. Do not show this to other people. I'm not going to show mine, but you're going to want to copy the stream URL, go back to your OBS. And then once you're back in your OBS, go to your settings, go to stream. It's going to probably have default to Twitch. We're going to say screw that and we're going to go to custom. There's no kick integration yet, maybe in a future update. But for now, you got to go to custom and then you need to copy and paste that stream server key into here and then do the same with your stream key. This is a server URL. This is where it will come in from. And this is the stream key. So the stream key is your super secret. You never want to give this away key. So grab that, copy and paste it into here. And then once you hit apply, then it will be connected. So if I hit apply right now, then it will be connected and I can hit OK. Now, unlike Twitch and everything else, you notice there's not a chat thing that just pops up, right? There's no chat thing. So we have to manually add this. This is why a video like this is helpful because we have to manually add some things like the stream key and stuff. Now we have to go up to docs and we need to make custom browser doc. And this one we can call kick chat. And for the URL, we have to go back to kick.com and I'll show you exactly where to copy and paste this URL from. So go back to kick and go back to where we originally had your stream key section and then go up to the stream section. And you'll notice there's a chat box over here on the, on the side, right? What we're going to do is we're going to hit the three dots and we're going to hit pop out chat. This is going to bring it out into a separate little browser source window. But you'll notice this is exactly what we need in order to put in for our URL slot. So go ahead and copy this and then go back to your doc that you were making and you're gonna paste this you're gonna paste this and now once you hit apply you're gonna have this nice kick chat and what you can do with it is you can drag it over to the side it's gonna be kind of tricky to find the placement of it and you can go ahead and add it to your docs basically and in the actual program which is really helpful because then you can just see everything in the OBS program and you don't have to be switching back and forth to different tabs or to different applications basically. Very helpful. Back over on the kick side of things, you can go to the upper right hand section that says edit stream info and you can do your title, you can do your game category and you can do your language and mature audiences and all that fun stuff. So you can set up your first stream and then go live or go live and then change this stuff. The last two major things I wanna share with you are going to be your advanced audio properties. So go ahead and with your audio source, your mic, hit the three dots, go down to advanced audio properties and just make sure these tracks are clicked because this is going to sync with the tracks that were in the encoding section. And it's going to let the recording software know that you wanted to record track one, which has the mic or track two, which could have something else. So make sure these are all enabled. If you want to make sure that you can hear your audio and hear how it's all sounding, it will echo just so you know, you can hit the monitor and output section in audio monitoring. I have a whole separate video on mic filter settings that is in the description below and possibly in the end screen. So check those videos out and you will learn how to have really clean audio. Otherwise, click close. And the last thing I'll leave you with today is going to be the settings and hotkeys. Hotkeys are really, really, really helpful, especially when you're in a streaming environment. You don't want to be just control tabbing, getting out of your game or getting out of you disrupting your flow. So you're going to want to have hotkeys for switching scenes. Like I can set a hotkey, you know, the plus sign, minus sign, F10, whatever. I can set a hotkey to switch to my talking scene, or I can set a hotkey to mute my main cam or mute my audio, or I can set one to start and stop streaming or record. Maybe you want to do a two hand wave and you want to just slightly lower one and be like, bye, and then hit your stop recording or stop streaming button. You can do that with hotkeys. It's a really niche scenario, but still worth it, I guess. Of course, if you really want to, you can get a stream deck or something that is a macro pad. These guys are awesome, but they do cost a lot of money. It's not something I would recommend to people who are just starting this out. It would be something that I would recommend to someone who's already got a, a stream, but they feel pretty confident and comfortable in, and they can afford to basically splurge on something that's not a mic or a lighting kit or something like that. That should be the gist of how to get you started on streaming to kick. This is not counting like alerts and stuff, but it's just the bare minimum to get going. Uh, hopefully this helped you with that. There are plenty of stuff to learn, so click on one of the videos floating around my head. 
and learn more. I'll see you in the next video.